I made a DMX isolated adapter to translate between RS-485 and logic level 3.3 or 5 volt signals with today's sponsor, PCBWay. This allows me to do some more experimenting with a DMX transmitter or a receiver project. In this case, I'm using an Arduino Uno as a transmitter controller to send logic level DMX signals to this interface. It provides isolation and drives the RS-485 bus to send DMX data to three different light fixtures in my experiment. Then I have the same PCB configured slightly differently, acting as a DMX receiver using an Arduino Nano in this case and it has an RGB LED on it that I'm using as a DMX light fixture. DMX is a communication standard for controlling things like stage lighting and other effects, like a fog machine, and it uses RS-485, so you can run longer cable lengths between all the light fixtures, especially in noisy environments. Devices are hooked up in a daisy chain for an individual controller, so the controller sends out data in the form of 8 bits per channel. That data goes through all of these devices, and if a device happens to be assigned to a given channel, it will take that 8-bit data and use it to control an aspect of whatever this device is, and just send on the data to the other devices. So in my case, I have three RGB LEDs that can set the brightness between 0 and 255 for red, green, blue, as well as white. So each of my light fixtures has four channels, and I happen to have set it up so that we have channel 1, 5, and 9 as the starting address on my three light fixtures. And being RS-485, the beginning and the final device should have a 120 ohm terminating resistor across the bus. So I have a provision for that on my PCB as well. If I have a board acting as a receiver somewhere in the middle, I'll remove the jumper to take away the termination. So if each light has four consecutive channels, if I want to set the second light fixture, which starts at channel 5 for red, as max brightness, then I'll send out from the controller a value of 255 on channel 5. So the first and the last light ignore the data, and the light in the middle responds, setting the red brightness. A proper DMX connector can be a 5-pin XLR, or an RJ45 can also be used. 3-pin XLR is prohibited, but it does get used, and all of my light fixtures happen to use it, so I designed my board with a 3-pin, and adapters can be plugged in if needed, but the main reason to avoid doing this it can be confused with another audio cable, especially if it's a microphone cable and it might have 48 volts of phantom power. We don't want that getting plugged into an RS-485 data bus. So 3-pin is not the best idea, but that's what my infrastructure uses, so that's what I went with. Looking at the PCB, here's the jumper for the termination resistor. So if this board is at the beginning or the end of a chain, the terminator should be jumpered on. On the digital logic side of this board, we always give it 5 volts because that powers the RS-485 half of the circuit. Then there's a VDD pin, which is for the logic side of the board. So this can be 3.3 or 5 volts, depending what it's hooked up to. And then depending if we want to use this board as a dedicated transmitter out over DMX or a receiver in from DMX, we just use the appropriate data pin to our project. And depending if we're transmitting or receiving, we set this pin here either high for driver enable to transmit or low for receiver enable to receive in. And then we just have our common ground. We have a physical separation of the copper at this point on the board, and we have a 5 volt isolated regulator here. So it takes this 5 volts in and provides an isolated 5 volts over on this side. Then we have a digital isolator IC which takes input or output logic level signals and translates it to RS-485. Then we have an XLR 3-pin footprint which can take either a male or a female XLR connector. We put the appropriate one whether we want to dedicate this board as a transmitter or receiver 
and whichever way we use this, we also have to install two resistor jumpers, either R3 and 4 or R5 and 6, and we leave the other pair vacant. And here's the schematic. It almost looks laid out the same as the physical PCB. So we take our 5 volts in, provide an isolated 5 volts out that powers the RS485 part of the chip here. And this isolated power supply wants to see a minimum load current of 20 milliamps. So I've got a couple of load resistors here and I put two of them so they can share the power dissipation and then combining this load with this LED and whatever's used by this transceiver, this can make sure we get into proper spec. The isolated transceiver I'm using is an ADM2483, which is a digital isolator. So the RS485 bus can either be in transmit or receive mode based on if the driver or the receiver are enabled at any time. And then we just have our logic level transmit and receive pins that would go to an Arduino or whatever else we're using. So we can set a different voltage rail on both sides of this. I'm running 5 volts on the RS485 side and the logic side suitable for 3 or 5 volt circuits. There's also a power valid pin here which can be used to avoid chatter on the RS485 outputs while powering up or powering down. So when power is stable, the power valid pin should be high. One way they recommend doing this is using another component, an ADM809, which is a reset supervisor. So as the power rail rises or falls, it will automatically set the power valid pin and keep this RS485 side quiet. I put a footprint for this reset supervisor in the PCB design, but I set it as do not install, and instead I'm just using a 10k resistor to bring power valid high, because in my case I'm not really concerned about chatter as we power up or down, and I don't have any of these parts on hand to test with anyway, but the option is there. There's the termination jumper for the 120 ohms across the bus if this is the first or final board in a chain. And here's the XLR DMX connector along with configuration resistor jumpers. By default I have this board configured as if it were a receiver. So that means it would have a male XLR connector on here. R5 and R6 are not installed. R3 and R4 have a 0 ohm jumper. And basically, to turn this into a transmitting board, we use a female XLR and we swap which pair of resistors are vacant or jumpered. What those resistors are doing is swapping the function of these two outside connector pins. Because depending if there's a male or a female connector here, these pin functions basically get mirrored. So the jumpers allow me to switch a given pin going between ground or data minus on the RS485 bus. So with a male connector here as a receiver, we want this pin to go over to data minus, and we want this pin to go to ground. We want the opposite if we have a female connector. And as I noted on GitHub, the connectors I used came from AliExpress, and I believe they're relatively generic, but the listing I got them on did give a part number of C1019 and C1020, but if I search for those on AliExpress, I don't get a result, really. I have to more search for XLR 3-pin and then just scroll until I see what looks like these right-angle through-hole connectors. But if I use a search engine and look for this whole combination right here, I have a better chance of finding a link to an AliExpress listing for these connectors. So that's just a side note on what I'm using. And in my test setup, I have two different sketches, and they're actually using two different libraries. So I'll start with the receiver. I noted here I'm using the DMX serial library with the Arduino Nano. And this DMX interface board, being a receiver, we're expecting data to come in and then go to the Nano. So we need to use this receive out pin here. And we're enabling the receiver, so we ground this pin for receiver enable. And so this receive out data pin 
just connects to the Nano UART receive pin, which is pin D1, because this library just looks on the UART for DMX data coming in serially. So here's the receiver in my test setup with the Nano. The receive data coming out of this board goes over to the Nano UART receive in. And since I'm running everything at 5 volts, we have plus 5 volts as well as VDD plugged into 5 volts. And then we have ground. And I have a jumper connecting receive enable to ground. Then I have this RGB 4 pin LED with three 1K resistors in series. And those go to the three pins called out in the sketch to control the LED. So I put the red, green, and blue pin on nano pin 9, 6, and 5. So if I want to control red, green, blue, and white on this LED, I need four DMX channels, and I just arbitrarily gave those red, green, blue, white channels 9, 10, 11, and 12, because my other two light fixtures take up the other eight channels. So when I get DMX data on channel 10, I'm going to control the brightness of green on this breadboarded LED and so on. So in the sketch, Using the library, all we're doing in the main loop is checking if DMX data came in on channel 12 or 9, 10, 11. And if so, I set that data as a PWM brightness level for the appropriate LED color. In the case of white, I'm setting red, green, and blue all to the same level so that it just acts as a white LED. And this board is at the end of the chain, so in between I have my other two light fixtures. And to look at how those are going to work, we look at the transmitter sketch. This one uses a different library, DMX Simple. I already had independent projects for testing out a transmitter and testing out a receiver years ago, and I used two different libraries, so I just stuck with that for now to make sure I can test the board. So I noted I'm controlling three different DMX lights, and their start addresses are 1 and 5 and then 9 for the one on the breadboard. So for example, my first light fixture starting at channel 1, we have red, green, blue, and white data that we can receive on channels 1, 2, 3, and 4 for this first light. And then if we wanted to control the second light, starting at channel 5, it would be 5, 6, 7, 8 for red, green, blue, and white. So we're using Arduino Uno pin 3 as our DMX data logic level output. So data is coming out of pin 3 and going to the transmit input of this board so it can transmit out over RS485. So data from Uno pin 3 goes to the transmit in and it ends up transmitting over RS485. And being in transmit mode, we bring this pin high because we want driver enable instead of receive enable. Otherwise, everything is set up similar to the other board where we have VDD and the 5 volt pin on the module connected to 5 volts, and then there's ground as well coming from the Uno. Now in the main loop, all I'm doing over and over, starting at the first light fixture, one by one, I'm fading up red and then fading down red, and then green, and then blue, and then white, then I move on to the second fixture and I do the same thing. And then the third fixture, which is the LED on the breadboard. Again, I fade up and down, red, green, blue, and white, one by one. And that's the end of the loop. So it repeats at the first light and then I can just verify that everything was working. So for fixture one, red, we're changing the brightness from zero toward 255 to go from off to fully on. And red on fixture 1 is DMX channel 1, as I have it all set up. Channel 2 is fixture 1 green, channel 3 is blue, channel 4 is white. And then going on to fixture 2, starting over for red, the beginning address is 5, and then 6, 7, 8, and so on. This is working well, both as a transmitter and receiver, so now I can use this for other projects.